everybody. Welcome to Five Rounds. John Ramdean and Robin Black with you. This past weekend, Bellator 170 went down at the Forum in Inglewood, California. The main event, uh, two Hall of Famers, in my opinion, mixed martial arts Hall of Famers, former UFC light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz uh, battled former UFC middleweight title challenger, as well as former WEC middleweight title challenger, all-around badass Chael Sonnen. Uh, this is a, a, a fight, I think, that uh, kind of captured the imagination of the, if you are interested in mixed martial arts or fighting, this is, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tune into that. I, I don't really know who this this Renan Ward is, got who's on the, on the undercard, or this Paul Daly. Paul Daly kind of sounds, sounds familiar. familiar. Sounds for, uh, did he beat Nick Diaz? Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, anyways, in the main event, Tito Ortiz getting the rear naked choke submission victory. And, I, and apparently there's a lot of people out there that believe that this is some sort of work. If you're unfamiliar with the term, it's fixed that uh, Chael Sonnen tapped, didn't really try to get out of the choke. I just look at it as it's two guys. How old is Tito Ortiz? He's 42. Chael Sonnen 39. 39. Is that even, do you believe that's actually his real age, <laughs> Chael Sonnen? No. You think he's 39 no. years of age? No. I would think that Chael Sonnen is probably older 49. than that. <laughs> I don't know if he'd be that, that old, but how old's Randy? Like in his 50s, right? Yeah. And Chael was in that same room mm -hmm. with Dan Henderson, who's now, also... Randy did come into that room in his mid-30s. Very true, but how old's Dan Henderson? 47 yeah, or 448? True. Four, and uh, Matt Lindland, I think all of those yeah. Chael son and Chael was like, like a <laughs> little boy in there when all those guys were training. Good point. But uh, these guys have been around the block, and to think about Tito Ortiz and what is probably going to be his last mixed martial arts contest, because he's given his body to this brutal game: back injuries, neck injuries, all around pain and suffering. He, uh, we were talking about it uh, on one of the hits today. Made his pro debut back in 1997. <laughs> And the amount of people that Tito Ortiz has been paired with throughout his mixed martial arts career, like this is really, really shocking because again, he grew up, if he's 42 now, that means he was 22 when he started his mixed martial arts journey, a child. And th during that time, fought Guy Metzger, Frank Shamrock, Jeez. Vanderlei Silva, Yuki Kondo, Evan Tanner, Elvis Sinisek, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, Patrick Cote, Vitor Belfort, Forrest Gr Griffin, yeah. Leota Machida, yeah, Rashad so Evans. <laughs> the list just yeah. goes on and on and on. So if this really is, if it really was Tito Ortiz's last time inside of the cage and he managed to get the mount, imagine Tito Ortiz, imagine having Tito Ortiz, yeah. you, know, you know that he has just spent the last whatever his camp is, to get him r mentally ready and physically ready for, in his mind, this can be my best performance ever. I'm going out on fucking top. How terrified you would be with <laughs> Tito Ortiz on top of you, knowing these elbows are coming any second. Then he gets your back, and the squeeze that Tito Ortiz must have after honing that for two fucking decades. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a strange one because... You really don't have to look far. We've commented, we talked about this already today on another hit, like you mentioned, but we have commentated 300 fight cards that have happened. I think there's more. Between, I think we've done closer to 500 in our career, but the ones that happened between 1997 and say 2012. Maybe like before that, because Pancras fighting. is 93. Yeah, oh yeah, we were calling. Mm. So we've called fights from the 90s and the first, you know, the OOs or whatever, and a lot of them just look like this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the level that these guys were at. Everything is a big thing, and they're trying full momentum, so you get a sweep here, and you everything is an attack to an attack to an attack. Guys lose position and trade position. And that's been going on for decades. So the the reason that people sit there and go, oh, man, this could be a work. And, and if they see something that's out of the ordinary or you, when you come through any fight, you'll find weird little moments because weird stuff's happening. You're asking your brain and your oh, body yeah. okay. to go into this string. Well, look at somebody in a car accident. Tell me what they do. Weird mm -hmm. things that they do. It's the same thing. So there's always weird little things. Um, but the, how the fight looks, if you familiarize yourself with a few dozen fights from the old school kind of look like they that. look like that yeah uh and then you got well the, the single leg takedown chael is a better wrestler than that unless he was trying to get him down to attack that chin there's all kinds of things you can do if you say god I, you know i'm training but 
I really don't want to be out there. Let's get it. Let's try to engage in wrestling. And when we do, I'll sit back and I'll have worked on nothing but sweeps from chin control, nothing but sweeps from head control. Mm -hmm. Working, I'm going to have just over and over. And there's a lot of smart people when they're time reduced will just create a menu for the fight. So all of that is a very real possibility. Somebody's like, oh, Tito touched at a certain point. All kinds of reasons people do that. All, and the one that they don't do that is to go let go of the choke. Because if it's a fake fight, it's not a real choke. You don't <laughs> yeah. have to tell them to let go because it's not a real choke. <laughs> you know, so that one doesn't hold it. I don't know. The controversy. And what about the strategy? If you think about the strategy, it's like, okay, uh, Tito or T, if I'm Chael Sonnen, it's like, okay, is he going to be able to out-wrestle me? Is that something that he's going to be able to? I don't believe so. Yeah. I believe that I'm the better wrestler, mm -hmm. uh, which leads me to believe that he's going to know that he won't be able to take me down, which means he's going to try to punch me in my head. Right. So, so knowing yeah. that I've got to be ready for him to punch me in the head, that's where Tito gets the takedown. Yeah, for sure. Also... Uh, I have to try to take you down. You're a really good wrestler. Yeah. So, uh, um, what's his name? Um, uh, he fought, um, fought Demetrius Johnson. He was training with Ferraz at the time, and we thought he actually won. Long lead. Miguel Torres. Miguel Torres. Yeah. Miguel Torres could not take down Demetrius Johnson. He knew that. So, pull and sweep. Elbow from the and, guard. And if yeah. Tito's aggressively trying to take me down, and I go down with some type of head control, I mean, everybody can sweep that guillotine threat to the sweep. So, especially if you've got a guy over-aggressive Tito. So it's very possible. I'm wrecking the place. It's very possible. Is it possible that something even weirder was happening? Does it work? Sure, that's possible. Uh, of all of the guys out there, and I'm not, Chael is a friend. I really like him. I'm not saying something untoward toward him, in my opinion, the way I'm thinking this. Chael thinks so far outside the box. Yeah. And he sees the, he sees the world of entertainment and politics. Trump's his guy. Yeah, I know. You know? And, hey, listen, if, if Trump can be Tito's guy and I still love Tito, then I, or Tito, Chael's guy and I still love Wasn't Chael. Wasn't he Tito's guy, too? Yeah, Wasn't yeah, Tito on that sure. show? Sure, I'm sure he was. Yeah, he was. He you're was. Right. You're right. Maybe they've known each other. <laughs> yeah, Maybe sure. this doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, but when, he, when you look, it, it, you don't have to be some, you know, uh, media expert to look at Chael studying the way that the Trump campaign went, which is controversy, controversy, controversy at all times. This idea, the mutation of the idea that all press is good press. If we have people who have, if we can convince X percentage of people to just go with the guy they see on mm -hmm. TV more, we, we will get enough to go with yeah. the ones that actually vote for us. It's important. It's, you know, yeah. And uh, they're racists, and some are very nice people. They're, they're going to build a wall. We're going to get Mexico to pay for it. This woman is bleeding from her, you know, uh, that nasty woman. All of those. Those are just greatest hits. Those are just Trump would roll out the greatest hits. And uh, that, that same with jail. Same with jail. Jail just rolls out the greatest hits all the time. But that was a um, disruption. The idea, the, the, we see disruptions in technology all the time. Airbnb is a simple example. The hotel business didn't. Uh, handle online. Instead, some app came along and took some percentage of their business. Um, and uh, the Trump campaign went and understood that media was not a game of right or wrong. It was a game of be in the media mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. as much as possible. And that it's important when Monday rolls around that the, the subject doesn't change, it stays on you. So say or do something crazy. So with a guy, a brilliant guy like Chael, who would study that, how would that carry over into if... Because if we're going to argue about what you said about a woman and, you know, where she's bleeding from, we're not going to talk about your international policy. Yeah. Because it's irrelevant. It's not about politics now. It's about convincing you that I'm your guy. Same thing. It's like if, if Chael would believe that it's not even about fighting anymore. It's about capturing the imagination of an audience. It's about manipulating the media in such a way that on Monday morning, everyone's still talking about us. How can we do that? Uh, you know, like it, it is It's a not, fine line yeah, for him though, is, right? Because it, it has yeah. to be a fine line mm -hmm. because he, based on what we know of Chael Sonnen, he's still a competitor. You can't be from the world of wrestling and not have that competitive edge because you've been a competitor. You've been told to win and drive and do, and I guess maybe it's at all costs, but he's still a competitor and the, the, there's a reality of martial arts you get in there so like, i'm trying to win ah shit i can't but what win. is he competing in now is he competing Both. in a single mixed martial arts fight for the night no or is he competing a, for public a bigger thing a bigger pie yeah. that has to do the way that you know and, and i'm not 
dissing or t taking a side with Donald Trump. You know, it, it's it is whatever it is. And you wherever you are, you work from that period. People sit around. Oh, man, this is bad. Or, oh, this is good. It's irrelevant. It is what it is. I'm not. I'm not bringing politics in for the point of, de of debating a side of politics. I'm bringing it in as an example of using d disruptive technology to change how the game is played. And uh, would Chael be above that, doing that? Not if the win, the, the, the thing he's seeking to win, is his employer, yeah. Bellator, needs to win. And Bellator needs to win the weekend, it needs to win the ratings, it needs to win the media consumption on Monday. I'm not just sitting here looking at, you know, is this fight this or is it that? I'm, I want to just go back out to 30,000 feet and try to look How's at... How's it penetrating? Yeah, because while everybody was sitting there arguing over the wall or, oh, you can't pay for this wall, a bunch of people sitting there typing this, that would be $100 billion. Mexico will never pay for that. That wasn't the point. Yeah. You got distracted. And if Chael or Bellator or the picture or the game wants us to be distracted, it doesn't matter if we're sitting here debating whether a fight was real or not, if in the end they win all of those things that they wanted to win. Nobody ever goes, oh, it's bullshit, that, because it, we can't prove it. It doesn't really look like bullsh bullshit Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. Um, and you know what was interesting? Dan Hardy, one of the greatest uh, uh, analysts, as he's emerged from becoming a fighter to somebody who loves analyzing fighting, he's convinced it's a work. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's convinced. Uh, at least he was that night on Twitter. Do you yeah, know what right. I mean now, Dan? He was drunk. No, he doesn't drink alcohol. <laughs> oh, really? I do suspect he smokes a lot of marijuana, <laughs> but that's just a suspicion. And I can say that because, as you and I know as Canadians, not only do we not judge that, but we think that's probably societally not a bad thing. Of course. You know, it's right? It mellows people out. Of course. Out. Uh, he likes tea, but uh, he did. Now, I, if we had Dan here, maybe we'll see him in Las Vegas. We could sit there, if we wanted to, and debate each moment. He's like, well, that looks like this. We could show him 20 fights yeah, yeah. from 2003 of aging guys like this, and the fights start taking on that identity. Because when people fight each other, if they feel, there's this familiar old vibe to it. Put two football teams out, and, sh and they'll run old football plays. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. So then you've got this little tap. That, as I said, the tap doesn't have to exist if we agree, if we assume that this is a fake fight. Why would you signal him anything? Thing. You, he's not really choking you. The single leg, you could choose to give that up to. So th depending on which side you, t if you cut your yeah. s the line in the sand, a guy even as educated as Dan cut the line. This is fake. He will now look for confirmation bias to prove it. Right. On the other side, well, we're somewhere in the middle. That's probably not fake, but maybe it is, yeah. which is the most uncomfortable position of all. I hate this. Thing. Yeah, I hate, I hate the, this. I hate the, the thought the too. Thought. I hate the thought. Uh, but and that's why I, just, I don't. I don't want to believe it no. because, again, what I've okay, seen. So now from you Chael don't want to believe it. Yeah. You will look for confirmation sure. yeah, bias true. to prove your side. Yeah. So the truth is, we do not know. We will never know, and they may not know. If Chael was un, in a moment of pressure and stress, and he thought it would go a different way, and the, the horror of Tito Ortiz above him yeah. gives up his back, and now yeah. he can't breathe, and sure, sure, and uh, there's certainly. When you look and you gather as much information as possible, there's no for sure thing one way and no for sure thing another way. And I'm failing at my job saying that mm -hmm. because, and this is f further supports this, that controversy is a good thing. If I stood up and said, absolutely not, these guys are dummies, this is this way, here's why, and, and yelled and maybe threw a homo homophobic slur in there, this, the job that exists for us of making people click on a video, that, that is why we get paid, apparently, partly to get... Well, if we did that... We have to tell the truth, But though. we have to tell the truth. That's the but our identity isn't go to say something crazy. And go, our identity is there are certain people who would prefer the truth and are ready for a more complicated conversation than this is fixed. No, it isn't. Yeah. You're a homo. You're a yeah. racial slur. And just elevate that thing up. Get lots and lots of hits and uh, get lots and lots of engagement, sell this product or whatever, and that's yeah, I, I, because we live in that We don't world. want that. We, no, I, I, we, we don't want that. What we want is we want like-minded yeah. people, people that love this stuff. When, when, when we go out there and people approach us, it's people that love, we, that love fighting, yeah. that love martial arts and combat. They don't care about uh, the beefs and uh, controversy yeah. and this and that. And... Uh, but uh, the world that I just described, which is the reality, it's, the reality. it's why yeah. the how the election in the United States was determined, and it's going to happen sure. in Canada, just the same. We're yeah, just like this. We're, we're, we're their yeah. little goofy yeah. brother. Yeah. Um, uh, it is why you live in a world where it would make sense 
to create some shenanigans in a mixed martial arts fight. We also live in a world where even when there is no shenanigans, we all kind of doubt so much. We get so much bullshit information, fake news stories, and all of this kind of stuff. I think the good side is we question everything. I, I, the bad side is we, we question, question everything. everything. Yeah, that's it. The, the thing is, I, I just don't feel that Chael Sonnen would jeopardize the integrity of the sport, a sport that he's dedicated the last number of decades of his life, actually his entire lifetime, you know, from uh, collegiate wrestling mm -hmm. into mixed martial arts and every the offshoots, you know, ADCC or submission mm -hmm. wrestling, mm -hmm. all of those things, I wouldn't imagine that he would want to uh, tarnish that reputation and uh, put a black eye on a sport that people still are hesitant to support when it's like, okay, we're trying to get acceptance, we're trying to get this. Now it's like, oh yeah, they fix fights just like boxing fix fights. It's the same thing. Or does it not matter? Well, his guy Trump wasn't concerned with the integrity of the political office. Not that that matters. Yeah. I'm not being judgmental. I'm trying to take no judgment at all and imagine a world in which Chael looks at it and goes, did you just say integrity? There's no integrity in any of this. This mm -hmm, is all nonsense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if this is all nonsense, then my motives here can't be questioned because everybody's motives. People, people go and, uh, you know, or if he has looked at the game, he went from wrestling to submission wrestling to mixed martial arts to the world of being a global entertainer, which, this, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because we're, we're still to... talking about it. We're doing yeah, their, their very business true. for but them. But I, I just am curious to know, does a guy like Chael Sonnen look at... You know, I'm in part, yes, I'm making myself wealthy and I'm setting up my family. But I'm also, I want the people that are coming from, uh, you know, that are, that are growing with me and growing mm -hmm. with the sport for the next generation of fighters. I want it to be where, like, think about how many fighters that from Team Quest left mixed martial arts broken and mm -hmm. fucking penniless. And they have brain damage and they have destroyed families and they have destroyed bodies. So wouldn't you want to look at that next crop of fighters to say, you know what, I want to make it a little bit better. I want to make it so th these guys get a little uh, more um, freedom and they're a little more, you know, financially compensated. Yeah, and then you, you wonder if that can even, once you get to a point that you don't believe that can be achieved the normal way, uh, because if you do a normal thing and you behave the normal way, the old way, and then you get up and you thank God and your team and, and you know, and I'm going to have the best training sure. camp ever and whatever, it w you won't break through the noise. That's, it's, it, there's this idea right now that, that I don't think, I think it's a powerful thing if you can see it, but I don't think everybody sees it. They think things are still the way they used to be. That if I went and spent money to promote Amanda Nunes, she would therefore be famous. Mm -hmm. But look around you. Everywhere you go, there's advertising of which you are ignoring 97, 98, 99% of it. The only, and news stories, and reporting on things, there's gonna be tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of minutes of content being analyzed and discussed on the uploaded to the internet in the next few hours. How is anyone going to pay attention to Bellator that happened on Saturday night? Well, if we get some controversy, they will. Mm -hmm. You know, if if I, uh, you know, if, if I say controversial things, it will happen. The TKO show. Yeah. The, those, yeah. uh, almost a week later, people were still talking mm -hmm. about that outcome. Yeah. So is that the is that what you are looking for? Are people willing to bend the rules and well, and and you know blur the lines? The 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 upside. And how you were talking about who we hope shares this time with us is something different. But if, once you get to the point that everybody is doing that, then telling the truth is different. Mm. So we're almost getting to that point now, you know, where extreme controversy, you know, uh, I mean, it's it is a very strange thing for me to to watch Chael Sonnen at times because I admire him as, and he is a very good friend and he's been very helpful to me. Um, but I'm also someone who studies media. Fighting is my passion. Fighting is what I yeah. love. But because my job is in media, I study it. I have an interest in it. And I don't commit to one vibe or another. I feel like being straight and honest and somewhat uh, introspective is different. Right. So that's why I think we maybe do that. But I understand now when I look at Chael, make a, say something about Tito's ex-wife, Jenna, mm -hmm. that was calculated. Of course it was. It was calculated. My job, I, I'm child now, I am employed 
to do to bring attention to this the company that pays me and everybody else here. And you can also say, when you look in the arena and 27 staff build the cage, 27 go out and they do the media, I am helping take care of the jobs of all of these right. people. So there are, no, there are no rules, especially if we analyze the way that the, the most uh, famous person in the world, although disliked by some, uh, is the president of the United States. If he analyzes the route that that man took to become the president, the philosophies, the, the fundamentals yeah, yeah. of what, not the uh, not the yeah. subject, Disru just yeah, exactly yeah. the uh, disruption uh, philosophy, the idea that the, the the true evolved mutated idea that all no boundaries, press is good press, yeah. that there is no boundaries, that controversy sells, that if you can get people talking about what you get said or your hair or yeah. whatever, it can distract them from the meat, which we as a society pay so much less attention to the meat and so much more to the dressing or the icing or the condiments or whatever. And if he studies that, then he looks at it and he sees his job, his responsibility mm, to this entire organization to at all costs make it successful. And on Monday morning, we talk about it. And I get that. Uh, we have a different philosophy. I can still admire this man and be friends with him and like him and, and value his input, but I have a very different philosophy about that. I believe that if everybody is Chael Sonnening it, if everybody is, is um, Conor McGregoring it, that the truth is this really rare and really, uh, it almost stands out more than the fake or more than the sell, you know? But it's, it's a strange one, you know? Uh, this is not what I like talking about. But at the same time, I understand what you're saying. Like, you, Chael Sonnen's trying to, he's looking at the bigger picture, and the bigger picture is two years ago, Bellator wasn't even a drop in the puddle. Mm -hmm. Nobody was talking about Bellator. All of a sudden, they're starting to make... Yeah. Starting to make waves. And this is kind of like Scott Coker utilizing Tito Ortiz and Chael Sonnen is like the UFC and the ultimate fighter. This is their Trojan horse because you're talking about the truth. Before you got to the, the spectacle that was Tito Ortiz and Chael Sonnen, you got to see the truth of Paul Daly flying through the air, yeah. slamming True. that knee True. into the side of Brennan Ward's head, thus developing uh, a new audience. It's like, oh, we, we came here for this we're going to leave wanting this. Yeah, it's true. You know, um, it's a tough one. Uh, you know, so, you know, I am not employed by the UFC. I did contract work for yep. them and they seem to like me and offer me other contracts. Awesome. Work. Uh, but I do not have a contract with them. I am not employed by them. I'm employed by Fight Network. If they were to offer me to be employed by them or you or yep. and, and, uh, any of us in some capacity to say commentate something, I would do that. I'd be like, man, oh, yeah. wouldn't it be, be fucking fun. great to commentate fun. the UFC? Now, why would I want to do that when I have a great full-time job? And just be telling me a personal uh, perspective. It's because it's really fun to do more stuff. Yeah. We're obsessively Agreed. looking for more stuff. I, I, if I got a phone call from Bellator and they said, you know, we'd love you to keep your job over Fight Network and we'd love, and not, this is, I've never spoken yeah, to yeah, them. Yeah, from yeah. There. I don't know that they yeah, know yeah. I exist. Yeah, 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 but yeah. if I got a phone call and they said, we'd like you to come in and, and talk about being a color commentator here, uh, you know, it'll be 30 weekends a month, we'll pay you, you can keep your other job. I don't know if I would want it. Hmm. I really don't. I don't know when I think about it as a fan. I think about commentating Michael Chandler's fights. Sure. I think about that and how incredible that would be. Uh, or whatever, you have some other role, you analyze, you're doing breakdowns yeah. before, oh, look what Chandler did. Fucking, I would. I, I do break down yeah. Chandler fights. Yeah. I love talking yeah. about Michael Chandler fights. That Paul Daly fight, I would be thrilled. Yeah. To, to go in there and you know I looked at it six times this morning and, yeah. and, and looked at how that elbow landed and had the, I, but I don't know if I could do I don't know if I could feel good about myself going in and being involved in a Dada 3000 fight mm -hmm. and as much as I love Chael and I love Tito this this circusy vibe around it Is, I it, don't know that and as much as this did get us to watch to get us to watch Paul Daly, and this did get us um, Michael Chandler more in our minds. I don't know if it's worth it for me. But what about the idea that we're seeing the UFC do that with CM Punk? Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. Now, but when I talk, when I look at the idea of, oh man, these guys, Dana calls, hey Robin, you're in. Yeah, you, we need yeah. you and Rammer to call, yeah. call the fights up in Vancouver. We jump in a second. Uh, hey, Robin, it's, Mr. it's Scott Coker. Oh, how are you, Mr. Coker? Yes, let, I don't know. I don't know. And then, I don't have any... I, I think uh, the reason... Like, isn't one of the reasons why is because you you know so well the UFC's roster. And it's like, okay, this is great. Now, 
because it's like it's the UFC and you you've come to accept greatness from the UFC. Now the opposite, if if, if Bellator called you and said, "Hey, this is what we're thinking. We want you to call yeah. Michael Chandler versus somebody, yeah. Rory versus yeah. uh, Paul yeah. Daly, or yeah. Andre Koreshkov yeah. versus yeah. so on and so forth," yeah. and they laid out yeah. this card yeah. for you, yeah. it's like. Oh, Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do yeah. that. Yeah, Vanderlei, yeah, Vanderlei yeah. versus Chael. Sure, but then what do I got to do next week? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're like, and here's the thing. When I'm, so now I said that out loud. I've never really thought that specifically. Now yeah, I yeah, said sure. it out loud. I just probably got rid of a possible job one day in the future. <laughs> now you did it. Burnt it. Uh, but, uh, and I think to myself, well, why? Yeah. Why, why do I feel that way? Uh, I don't have any, I, again, I have no, I don't. I am not employed by one mm -hmm. or the other. I'm One's established, by though. But it's, that's it. But I feel like, whether I'm right or not, I feel like I know what the UFC is about. Sure, right. And I feel like it is about mixed martial arts combat. Now, they, and whether they're sometimes, uh, and when my thing that I love and the identity and the flavor and the mixed martial arts combat that I love, when CM Punk goes in there, I'm disgusted. You know, and I get it. I get it. If I if I sat in and uh, I'm in Vegas tomorrow, if I saw Dana and he's like, "Hey," uh, he he wouldn't. He doesn't watch anything other than <laughs> stuff they make. But if he was like, "Hey, I heard you didn't like CM Punk," what's it? And I would talk to him he, because he's so passionate. He might listen, man, and he might. He really loves way. it, yeah. and he tried but, to twist it. And and it's good is, for the sport. Uh, yeah. and I don't like, think it is good yeah, for the yeah. sport. I don't think that it yeah. is. I, but I've got so much pent up connection to this thing that my, when I think of the UFC, it's 90% my passion. I love the I love the feel, I love the fights, I love the way they're presented. I can feel Dana's passion. And I think when yeah. you take the, the start of the company and that identity comes down, the bad that comes with it, that it's bombastic and over the top and you know, like opinionated, whatever. But it starts with a passion that I connect to. Um, my friend Matt De La Rosa made that video in between the the prelims oh, and the yeah, main yeah. card with so Bob cool. O'Reilly. If we watch that, you feel that passion. Uh, and then I watch this, and I feel a sh uh, circus show. And I, there's great fights in this circus yeah. show, but I don't know what they're about. I don't know what their rude identity is. I loved uh, the uh, Paul Daly fight and Brennan Ward. I loved yeah. it. You yeah. take that just in its own, sit me down, watch those fights. I love it. Yeah. Every time Mike fights, it will talk more about Michael Chandler fighting than we will about anything happening in the UFC because yep. he's that special. Ben Henderson, when he was fighting Mike, that was brilliant. But the identity of what it is and, you know, the way that I, it, going into it on Thursday or Friday, I was super positive about it. Remember we were talking about it's oh, yeah. fun and yeah, yeah. these two old uh, legends and I love Chael. If I, if I need help with some something in the fight business, I'll call Chael and he's always will, will answer, which is very kind. He's a good person. Um, but there's something about the identity of Bellator. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, yeah. it's not really my You're, thing. It's not your thing. Flavor, yeah. the identity of and, it. And Coker's has said... He, he, the essence. Uh, Coker's, uh, his, uh, his angle is we're a sports entertainment company. So... Yeah, we're we're in the fight business, but we're here to make sure we have to know our audience. And sometimes our audience loves Kimbo Slice and mm -hmm. Dada. And you know what, uh, Coker, uh, Coker will be the first one to see. You know what it was a mistake? Yeah. Because especially the way things unfolded, it was a mistake. But based on the things that we've done, the times we've we've showcased Kimbo's fights, we've shown Herschel mm -hmm. Walker's fights. Things work out for us, and th that's our angle. Obviously, that's not what the goal is because Coker has also, as a promoter, showcased Nick Diaz yeah. and showcased Ronda mm -hmm. Rousey and True. showcased Luke Rockhold yeah. and showcased Daniel Cormier, and the list goes on and on. He understands high-level entertainment, uh, high-level fight abilities, but he also understands that we've got to yeah. entertain And people. I understand that there are some people who just, they love it and they appreciate the art of it. Yeah. Entertaining, presenting, color, music, walk, yes. all of that is art. And I get it. My art is the uh, martial arts, the combat. But I understand, I, I'm not judging people. That Some people like blue and some people like orange. And I mean, that's cool. I support their desire to like it and I, I hope Bellator succeeds still. But I connect to the, the, the combat and the martial arts uh, 
and I do resist it. If, if ever I have something that I contribute, and I break, do breakdowns for Bellator too, uh, but if I have something I contribute to the UFC or Bellator, I'm pushing to push my my perspective. I believe it's a fair one. I believe it's an honest one. I believe it's one that is not represented 100%. enough, so I push it. If uh, I'm involved in something, so I'm doing something with Travis Brown uh, on Thursday, a uh, breakdown with Travis Brown, and, and uh and we're, it's very analytical, and if I and it's very uh, art and and combat oriented. When things push a little bit more drama and selling fights in that way, I'll resist it. But some of it gets in. But when it swings too hard that way, that's when I will criticize uh, the thing I like. I'll criticize CM Punk. I'll criticize, you know, Mickey Gall fighting an 0-1 fighter, despite the fact that Mickey Gall will be a great fighter one day. I'll try to rationalize it. I'll be, well, you know, he'd probably get to 6-1 and one anyways, and then he could come up to mm-hmm. the UFC. What's the big deal seeing this yeah, yeah. young guy go through that phase? See, the issue I had but, with it is I think the UFC should have had a— Pride type show where the UFC presents Pride Fighting Championships, and that's how you can use a guy like CM Punk. Put a pro- former pro wrestler against a Japanese pro wrestler. But when I think of the UFC, I think of the NFL of mixed martial yes. arts, the highest level. So when we were talking, I was just talking to Chad, and he's like, You would never see some 40 year old or 45 year old running back come out onto the, yeah. on the field of the NFL. Exactly. He's right. and, and that's supposed to be the UFC, and that's what mm-hmm. I see that as. I, know. I see Bellator, Scott Coker's, I don't even, Bellator, Strike Force, whatever it is, I see Scott Coker. Coker's vision yeah. for mixed martial arts, and although it, there is some outstanding high-level fighting, it's all rooted in entertainment. Yeah. So yeah. no matter what, we're trying to yeah. put on the most entertaining fights yeah. possible. And if that's your thing, then then yeah. a lot of the people who really appreciate that will may and will move over there. Uh, but so because we and we're just figuring this out now, why would we get upset if we see something we don't like in the UFC? It's just a it's Thing. We get upset because we actually have a connection. We We believe we We know what it means. We believe it has an identity. It's very hard to do. You know, uh, we were talking about this the other day. Somebody has like a Harley Davidson logo on their arm. I know something about him. Now, he may or may not ride bikes, but he's a bit of a rebel. I know something about his identity. Like, why would anyone put like, you know, any logo? Corporate logo. Corporate logo. (laughs) Exxon. Somehow (laughs) they've created your connection to what Harley Davidson is about. Apple does it too. There's probably nerds with Apple Mm -hmm. computer logos on them. And we think we know something. There is an identity that they've created that we believe, we feel. And I feel that with the UFC, which is why I like it. And why do we get mad? or freak out or like whatever because somehow they've done something to undermine our belief of what they are. <laughs> That's what it you is. You know what I mean? You, th- you, What comes to your mind? The NFL of, of sports. So why are you so mad? Because they're doing shit that the NFL of sports of, of fighting wouldn't, wouldn't do. do. So it's like and so with that, that we're, to get back to the, the point is Bellator is also creating an identity. It's just a different one. They like exactly. They're Dell computers or they're whatever other brand of something. That they, they and when you think about it logically, it makes sense. Somebody they're different. Else, yeah. Like because if you are if you are Apple computers and I come out, I'm gonna be orange computers. Exactly the same. I'm never gonna make it. I'd have to come out and be different. And you know what? That's what Bellator is doing, and that makes sense. UFC going down this weekend. Uh, where is that happening? At the Pepsi Center, Denver, Colorado. UFC on Big Fox. Valentina Shevchenko taking on Juliana Pena. I would imagine the winner getting the next crack at 135 pounds. And Amanda Nunes. Andre Orlovsky taking on Francis Ngannou. Alex Caceres, Jason Knight. But the big fight, our main event, uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone taking on Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Uh, Robin Black doing a, a breakdown of Gamebred that you absolutely need to see. That's it for us. Uh, i got to thank Jeff over there running the board. He's Robin Black. I'm John Ramdy. We'll see you later on this week.